bring praise and honor to our rescuer. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning. I wanted to show that video without the lyrics in it because I wanted you to focus on what a church can be. It doesn't have to be a, a, a shiny building. It doesn't have to be at a specific location. If you notice, they were having a praise and worship service on a tractor in a wagon going down a dirt road. And they were having church at a local inn. So you can have church anywhere. The Bible tells us where two or more are gathered, God is there with us. There's churches all over the world that meet in buildings that are not worship centers. There's people right now that are meeting in the back rooms of houses without electricity, by candlelight, because they're in fear of being discovered. But they want to worship God. They want to praise God. They want to have church. There are people that are in multi-million dollar complexes that have five, six services a day, 10, 15, 20,000 members in the church. But they're having church for the same reason. So with all this diversity in the church, to be church members. What does it mean to be part of that? I've had people ask me have church right where I'm at. Yes, you can. Ourselves. Because we need to lift Sometimes we need to smack each other on the hand and say, stop doing that. There was a saying that a credit card used to have. I don't know if they still have it or not. A member of a club. Did you have a clubhouse when you were a kid where no icky girl? I can remember growing up, I had a neighbor across the street from me. Our quote-unquote clubhouse was one end of an Airstream trailer. And we used to save up our allowance to where we could plug the air conditioner in to run the AC. You know, just that little 10 foot section. But, you know, nowadays, you know, people belong to grocery clubhouses. Everybody, you know, part of, they have on their keychains, you know, rewards, tags, to where, you know, if you go to a store and they scan the barcode, you know, they track your purchases and can offer you coupons and stuff. Okay, well that's all part of being a club. You know, those are privileges that you get for care. Well, beginning in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 and 25, the Bible tells us, and this is coming Full of belief, confident that we are presentable inside and out. He always keeps his word. Let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging love and helping out, not avoiding worshiping together as some do, but spurring each other on, especially as we see. So let's do it. Stop making excuses. Stop wasting time putting things off saying, when I get around to it, I'll do it. Officially today, it's time to get to it. 
full of belief and confident that we are presentable in through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible proclaims that. We can take hold of that promise. And it tells us, keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. So we know that we've been made anew. But why come to church? Is it for the music? Is it for the outstanding preaching that you'll hear next week? <laughs> Why do we come here to get to you today that when Paul is writing, a particular organization. And specifically, the body of Christ. Just as a body, though one, has lives with Christ. Our bodies are a magnificent creation of God. Of doing something and we can do it or sometimes we don't think about doing something and we do it it's just amazing do this and shake somebody's hand without even thinking about it the fact that we can just Breathing, heart rate, blinking, all these things take all these different parts in together. And it takes each separate part working together in order to make that happen. The body of Christ and the church is no different than, any, than like that. We are all separate members. We're all ministers for Christ. Every single one of us. Not everybody is called to preach. Not everybody is called to participate in the praise team. Not everybody is called to participate in the tech team. But everybody is called to do for Jesus. I can't do. The people that you can reach for Jesus... I can't reach. The people that you come in contact with for Jesus, I can't contact. And your personal testimony for Jesus is unique. It's like a fingerprint. It's specific. And God created each one of us specifically for his purpose. As ministers of Christ and as members of the church, we need to seek out to do a few things. We need to seek out to share our testimony. Why? Because our testimony is unique. Again, the people that you're able to reach, I can't reach. The people that you come in contact with daily at work, at the grocery store, at the club you belong to, I can't reach. But your testimony is unique. Your testimony can reach those people. Those people that are in the military or have been in the military. You have a specific connection with those that are in the military. That connection is unique. You can reach them. Those that have first responders or have been first responders in their families. You can connect with those people. You understand what they're going through. Those in financial industry. <coughs> Those that are retired, you've had a glorious life, and you can connect with other retired people. It's 
So each one of us is unique, and we need to seek out those ways that we can share our testimony with others. Because why else would God give it to us? Why would he give us a testimony and a purpose in our lives if we can't share it with others? If we just keep it bottled up, that does no good. It's just like this bottle of water. Unless you take the top off of it and drink out of it, guess what? It makes a little noise, but that's about it. It doesn't do a single bit of good. You've got to utilize it. Utilize your testimony. And in doing that, that there are over 4 million people in the United States that have never heard the name of Jesus. Now, that's happening right here in our own backyard. There's people here in the city of Tampa that have no idea what the love of Jesus is about. We need to seek it out. God's given us the ability. God has blessed us. But we need to find ways to do that. And just like it said in Hebrews, we need to be creative. We don't need to follow the status quo. We can do it that way. And guess what? Somebody who wasn't reached doing it this way is going to be reached doing it that way. We don't have to follow what everybody else has done. The only thing we need to be concerned with following We need to grow his kingdom. Now, does that mean that we're responsible for saving people? No. What that means is we need You see, it's all, part, it's all going in steps. Once we do that, people are going to want to know what it is that we've got. Somebody once said, smile, all the time. Makes people wonder what you've been up to. <laughs> it's pretty hard for me to walk around and say, hey, I'm happy in God. I'm happy in Jesus when I'm doing this. How's it going? Fine. <laughs> How are you doing today? Fine. You realize the gift that we've been given? We've been given the gift of eternal life. We've been given the gift of freedom over sin. We've been given the gift of freedom over death. We should be shouting from the rooftops. But oh, some you know, been called a lot worse. But we need to seek out to build God's kingdom. We just need to share and leave the rest up to God. God's responsible for the results. But as ministers, we need to share with others. Going back to television commercials, there was a popular hair product that said somebody used it, and they told two friends, and they told two friends, and they told two friends. And suddenly you had all these people using this product. Well, it's the same thing with the Word of Christ. We need to share it with somebody. And then they'll share it with somebody. And then they'll share it with somebody. And it'll keep growing and growing. That's how the church was formed. Jesus started with 12 men. Simple men. Common men. They didn't know how to preach. Sometimes they were fishermen, and obviously at times they didn't really know how to fish either. Jesus had... Put your net on the other side of the boat. But God will equip us with what we need to share and make disciples of others. He will give us whatever we're lacking. And it's when we're lacking that he can rise and show his strength. God encourages us to share his love because he doesn't force it on anyone. 
It's a gift that was freely given. I grew up during a time when our family really wasn't involved in the church and really did not start attending church on a regular basis until I met my lovely wife. It was kind of hard not to attend church when I was dating her as her mother was the church secretary and the church organist. Her father was chairman of the deacons and had a mean left hook and carried a gun. Her sister sang in the choir. So in order to date her, well, I had to start going to church. But at the time that we were going to church, that was during the time of the Bible thumpers. The big wooden pulpits that if you went up there and you looked down and you could see all the indentations from the pastor's ring hitting on the exit. You know, but that was the way the word was given at that time. The word is still the word today. God's word doesn't change it. The presentation may be different. The way that church services go may be different. But God's word doesn't change. And we still need to do the same thing that those original 12 did. Jesus told them to go out and make disciples among the world. As ministers of the church and as church members, that's what we're called to do, is to go out and make disciples, to share the word, to share our testimony. Imagine if each one of us brought just one person. And then if each one of those people brought somebody the following week, the congregation is growing exponentially. But that's how it starts. That's how the church starts. Everyone has something to do for the body. Everybody can do something differently. But it's all for one common goal. It's all for the body of Christ. What the leg does. Thank goodness the ear cannot do what the mouth does. <laughs> But there's times that we need to speak. <coughs> Bless you. There's times that we need to be quiet and listen. There's times that we need to be still <coughs> and know that he is God. But we each have a unique gift to offer. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 18 through 20. But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? Now we're going to stop right there. Imagine if there was a body, and I know somebody's going to say, well, I know somebody like that. <laughs> but imagine if there was a body that is all mouth. Or imagine if there was a body that was all arms. What good is that going to do? The body is made up of different parts. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. To sum it up, we're all in this together. We're all in this messy thing called life, struggling through as best we can. But just as we are all one body, we can focus on one life, and that's the life of Jesus. Many members, but one body. Continuing on, as members of the church, we should be concerned with the spiritual growth of the church. Now, in spiritual growth, that not only means the growth of others as we're making disciples, but you know what? That means the growth of ourselves. Because how can you share with somebody else on how to grow in a relationship with Jesus Christ if you're not growing yourself? If you've become stagnant and stale in your relationship, 
then how can you share with somebody else to be fervent in their relationship? We need to grow ourselves first and then those around us to grow. If there's no growth, then we need to ask ourselves, why? Why is my relationship not any better? And being as this is the first Sunday of 2018, it's a good starting point. Think back through the entire year of 2017, from January to December, and then think where you are right now. How has your relationship with Jesus Christ and how has your relationship with others changed? Has it gotten better? Do you feel like you're closer in your walk with God? Or maybe you're a little bit further away? <clears throat> How's your relationship with your friends and family, with your coworkers? Has it gotten better? Have you found opportunities to share your testimony? And I'm not saying you've got to take a Bible into work and start beating people over the head with it. But I know at my job, I've had several opportunities to share. But again, it's sharing that personal testimony. It's what has God done for you. But examine your relationships. Where are they at? How can you improve them? Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 19, and again in the message. My response is to get down on my knees before the Father. I ask Him to strengthen you by His Spirit, not a brute strength, but a glorious inner strength, that Christ will live in you as you open the door and invite Him in. And I ask Him that with both feet planted firmly on love, you'll be able to take in with all followers of Jesus the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love. Reach out and experience the breadth. Test the length. Plumb the depth. Rise to the heights. Live full lives. Full in the fullness of God. We sing the song a lot by Ren Collective called Thrive. God just doesn't want us just to get by. He wants us to live. He wants us to experience life and to be excited in life. And when we think about the blessings of God and what he's given to us, you can't help but get excited. But we need to take it in with all followers of Christ. We are not in competition with our sister churches. Just as each one of us is a member of a body, each church our church can reach people and reach souls that a church of five, six, ten thousand members cannot reach. And a church of that size can reach people that we cannot reach. And there are churches around the world meeting in back rooms and bedrooms and living rooms, small groups meeting in restaurants and libraries that can reach people that we as a church cannot reach. But we're all working for the same goal. We're all working for Jesus. We're all ministering in the ways that he has blessed us to minister. Other churches can offer programs we can't. We can offer church programs that other churches can't. But we're all working for the same thing. Cooperation with each other. I've said it before and I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying it again, but my firm belief is as a follower of Jesus Christ, you either follow him or you don't. Plain and simple. All this in between, that needs to be gotten rid of. But that's what I believe. We're in cooperation with each other. We don't need to be in competition with each other. Through the power of Jesus Christ, we can do all things. The same power that raised Jesus is in us if we have faith and belief. 
through encouragement from each other, and by encouraging others, our faith is strengthened. When we gather together as a church, we are there for each other in good times and in bad. That's why we need to come together as a church. Not everybody brings their A game every single day. You're going to have aches. You're going to have pains. You're going to go through trials. You're going to be up on top of the mountain. God's going to pour out an immense blessing on you. But we're not all in the same spot. But even though we're not all in the same spot, we're all in the same boat. We're all in this together. And that's why we need to come together as a church. That's what being a church member is about. It's about sharing with each other. Yes, we have fellowship and we have meals together. But it's going deeper than that. That's what the small groups come in for. It's for sharing with each other. That's what prayer meetings are for. It's for sharing each with each other. The church are for. It's for sharing with each other. That's what that little text message with an emoji is for. It's for sharing with each other. Hey, just checking up on you. Want to make sure you're okay. Hey, have a terrific Tuesday. Have a marvelous Monday. Hey, I missed you last week. I'm praying for you. That's what that's about. That's what being a church member is about. It's about being together. Even Jesus didn't have church alone. Why do we think that we should be able to do that? Our church statement says that we strive to connect people to God, to service, and to others. If people aren't getting plugged in, or if we're not fulfilling what God has called us to do, we need to figure out why. Talk to somebody. Talk to a pastor. If you don't know who your deacon is, find out. Talk to somebody. Get plugged in. Get connected. Get involved in a life group. Get involved in a ministry. Well, there's no ministries here that I really like. Okay, start a new one. God's given you a gift. Pastor Tim said it many times. Well, I think, you know, somebody will come up to him. Well, I think we need to do this. Okay. When do you want to start? When our girls were playing softball, we had shirts that were printed up at the Little League. If you don't like what you see, volunteer. If there's not a ministry that's called. It may be a gardening ministry. It may be sending out cards, sending out handwritten notes. Whatever ministry it is that God has called you into, utilize that. We all have a unique gift that God has given us. We need to utilize If not, then it's kind of like getting a Christmas gift and not unwrapping it. What good does that do? Finally, as members of the church, we need to be, be concerned with the impact that the church is having on the community around us. How do we affect those outside of these four walls? Do we have any effect on those outside of these four walls? 1 Peter 4.10 As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Now being a good steward of what God has blessed us with doesn't only apply to us as individuals. It also applies to the church. 
And let me make no mistake and be perfectly clear. And I'm going to say this twice just to make sure everybody hears it. It's not about money. Because God has blessed us with so much more than money. God has blessed us with talent. God has blessed us with unimaginable gifts. But we need to utilize those gifts and to be good stewards of them. God gave Aaron a gift of music. Gave Joe a gift of talent on the piano. I can sing, but I can't play guitar and I can't play piano. But together, God has blessed us as a group. God has blessed the praise team as a group. Each individual can sing notes that the other individual can't. Together, we come together as a group. We have a very diverse tech team. Some can do things with sound, some can do things with the computer. Each one. groups that meet. Each one individually helps the other one out. The ladies that are working over in the children's ministry, they can't do that alone. It takes a team working together because they each have talents. But we need to utilize those talents and to be good stewards of the talent that God has given us. God gave me the gift of music, but if I didn't use it, what good does that gift do? God may have given you the gift of storytelling, of sharing with others your life experiences, and sharing with them how God has affected your life and how God has been there through the different stages of your life. But if you just go around, how you doing? Fine. How's today? Fine. And don't share anymore. those blessings that God has given you do if we're not able to share them. We need to be good stewards and to utilize what God has given us each and every day. We need to seek out opportunities. It may be something simply as letting somebody go ahead of you in, in the grocery line. Letting a car out in traffic. Doing a random act of kindness and paying for the coffee for the car behind you at Starbucks. Like that are going to affect people. But I guarantee you they affect people. They're going to remember that. It's going to be a chain reaction. And just like you help somebody, they're going to help somebody. They're We leave the results up to God, but we utilize the talent that he's given us. We don't just let it go to waste. James chapter 2, verse 14 through 17. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of What good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, it's dead. It's great to say, oh yeah, I'm a member of a church, you know, we do this, we do that. Oh yeah, well how are you helping out? Fine. <laughs> yep. If we have truly, truly have that faith in God, then we need to put that faith into practice. If somebody's cold and we say, hey, you need a coat, but we don't offer a coat, what good does it do? I read a story this week, somewhere up north, but there was a lady who had been collecting coats. She would tape them to light poles. 
hang them on fences with a note that says, if you need this, please take it. Thank you. And that's it. <laughs> Nothing else said. No expectation of anything in return. She just wanted to help. You know what? I bet we've all got a few clothes in our closet that we can get rid of. That we've all got something that we can do to help somebody out in one way or another. But we have to put it into practice. If I stand here and say I want to walk out those doors and I don't take that first step, I can stand here all day and never make it to those doors. we got to put faith into practice. We got to put the work where our mouth is. We can't just talk the talk. Because then all we're doing is we're like symbols. We're just making noise. And it doesn't do any bit of good. Watch the one of my favorite movies last night, National Treasure. Again. And there's a there's a line in it that says, those that have the ability to act through the faith of Jesus Christ, we have that ability to act. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It doesn't say we can do nothing through Christ who strengthens me. We can do all things. Not some things, not a little thing, all things anything we put our mind to. If it's in God's plan, we can do it. John 13, 34 and 35. Just as I loved you, you should love one another. For love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Prove to the world that you are my disciples. We need to love one another. We need to share that love. Seek out opportunities for that love. That's what being part of a church is about. We've each been given a gift from God. But what good is it if we don't use it the way that God intended us to? Here can reach someone. That's what it means to be part of a church. That's what it means to be a church member. That is why we come here. Right now we're going to transition into the Lord's Supper. I'm going to ask the deacons to come forward. As church members and as believers in Christ we know that we're going to go through trials we know that we're going to go through tribulations but nothing compares to what Jesus went through on the cross nothing compares 